Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our stream. Uh, this will be a tutorial on session tokens. Uh, my name is Jason Tigas. I'm a developer advocate and also on the stream. Paulo? Hi, oh, sorry. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Paulo. I'm a developer here at Shopify. I work in the um, developer documentation and libraries team. Cool. So today we're going to be going over first why you need to be switching over to session tokens, um, the changes you'll need to be making on your front end, uh, the changes you'll need to be making on your back end, and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A. So the code we'll be using for this tutorial is based off of the, the boilerplate from the Shopify CLI. So I'm just gonna quickly get that set up here. Just typing Shopify create. It's gonna be a node and we'll call this JWT guide public. And we'll let that go. Um, so while that's completing, first let's let's go over what is a session token and a JWT token. Like, how do they differ? Um, what do they mean? And what are they used for, Paulo? Right. So um, I think it's very important here that we um, we discuss the difference between an access token to the admin API and um, your um, your session token, your JWT, that you're going to be using um, to perform OAuth and to authenticate with Shopify. So the JWT is the way that your app um, will be sort of signing the requests that it makes um, between the client side and your app's um, backend. So the JWT is what will be used to like, authenticate requests from the client to your app. And then the access token that you get from Shopify is what you use to send um, requests from your app's backend um, to Shopify to fetch data, to fetch specific data from um, the merchant's shop. Cool. So why are we moving away from cookies? Right. So um, lately, um, recently, uh, the most modern browsers, they have been um, increasing um, their security features. And a big part of that has been to sort of discourage uh, the use of third party cookies. Um, third party cookies are basically any cookie that's used uh, by a website that's loaded within an iframe. So for example, if you have an ad on a page, it's usually loaded in an, in an iframe. And if, you, if that ad tries to set a cookie in your browser, to, to, which could be used, for example, to track information about you, um, the browsers are now starting to uh, more and more start to block that and disallow that sort of behavior, um, which is great um, in the sense that it adds security to, to, the, the, to the user of the browser, um, but it also creates issues for how apps used to work. Because previously, Shopify apps would, um, would use cookies to authenticate the requests that you make from your client side to your app's backend. And because right now, we're, when, you, when you load an embedded app, it's an iframe within the Shopify admin, um, we sort of run into the same situation that you would as if you were loading an app within another page. So if you try to um, use a cookie, to set a cookie in your app while it's loaded within Shopify, that's considered a third-party cookie. And therefore, you would have issues in, in retrieving that information in order to be able to authenticate your request to the server. Yeah, and I think we all remember the pain we felt in using cookies just like in early 2020 when Google restricted uh, the third, the way third-party cookies are accessed where uh, the same site change uh, was forced and pretty much every app had to update their cookie to use same site none. So that was like a small change, but if you didn't make that change, your app would have stopped working. And so those, those kind of changes we can foresee are coming. Um, more and more and cookies are going to be more restricted which is a good thing though uh, uh, so this is like a session token but there's also access tokens so how does this differ from the oauth access token 
Right. So, um, as I was mentioning before, um, there, there are two different processes involved in getting information from Shopify, from, from a, a merchant store within Shopify, into uh, the client side of your app. And so, the, the way that uh, those things are separated is that you're going to use your cookie, well, your previously cookie um, session, and now um, going forward, we're going to be using JWT. And with that session token, uh, what that lets you do is it will enable your client to send information to the server, um, which essentially identifies like, I am the client making this request to the app server. And, and so the server knows how to respond to that and knows who is making that request. And to, in order to fetch the data from Shopify itself, uh, the, the app server is going to need to, to have an access token, which allows access to the Shopify admin API. So by, <clears throat> by fetching that access to, by, by performing the OAuth process, um, what you're doing is you're going over the, the process of, of uh, identifying which merchant is using your app to Shopify and in the, in the same process, getting permission from that merchant to access their data. And what that gives you back is the access token that you can use to fetch data from Shopify. Cool. Okay, how about we go right into the code here? Um, our command is completed. Uh, let's look at what a JWT token um, actually looks like. So I'm just going to open this up. And let's see. Let's allow that. And we're going to be using a function called get session token. And this is available through AppBridge Utils. And I think this is a um, good time to mention that you can only use JWT right now with AppBridge. That's correct, right, Paulo? Yes, um, AppBridge will, it, you can use AppBridge on your client side to abstract away all of the logic of, of generating that token and authenticating it with Shopify and making sure that it, it is the, the most recent token that you should be using. So AppBridge will handle all of that logic to you. All you will need to do um, from your app's client side is basically fetch that token and um, forward that uh, to your app's backend. Cool. And so this function, get session token, um, is what I'm using to console log the session token. But Paulo, we will never need to actually use this, right? In our yes, code. exactly. Um, we're, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on that later. Um, but once you're using AppBridge, all the requests you make from your client side um, should be made using the authenticated fetch function, uh, which is also provided by AppBridge Utils. And that function will internally handle um, generating the token for you and, and making sure that it's included in the right way when, you're, when your app makes a request to the server so that you don't, uh, you don't have to worry about that from, from your app side. Uh, we're get session token here will we'll show us um, what the token looks like, uh, but you don't necessarily have to use it in your app. Cool. So let's uh, serve this app up. And let's install it. So we're going to be looking at the, the console. Let's wait for it a bit. Oh. Be too late. A little bit. A little too early. There we go. Okay, so here's our install. I'm going to pull up the. Uh, console so we can see the output.
And there you go. So there's our session token. And so we want to, right now, it's um, encrypted. So we want to see what it looks like. So using this useful site, jwt.io, you can paste in your session token. Actually, before I do that, I want to get the secret. Um, so there's two parts of this. There's a session token in this main window, and then there's a secret. And the way this site works is uh, you have to put in the secret first. So I'm just going to get the secret. So the secret is the API secret key. And I'm going to paste that in here. And then I'll get the session token. Oops. And there you can see that the signature is verified. Um, I can show that. Again, like if I just put in a different signature here, it still says verified. That's just the way the site works. But if I paste the session token back in, you'll see it's invalid. So, which yeah, is just so, that everything's okay. Yeah, so um, the, uh, this token is used by Shopify to to identify who is making the request. So um, we're, we're, we can go into a bit more detail into the specific components of the token. Um, but the idea here is that this token signifies a request made uh, by this user using this shop on your app. So this enables us to, to identify who is making that request in order to, to be able to make sure that uh, we, we're not exposing information that we shouldn't be uh, to other users. Um, and how about going through each of these um, attributes for the JWT token? Yes, so um, you can see here that we have um, several different components in, in the payload for that um, JWT. The most relevant ones that we are interested, the ones that identify your request uh, as being a valid one from, from Shopify, would be um, the test um, field, which indicates which um, shop is using your app. And then um, the sub field indicates which user from that shop is using the app. So when you're using um, online tokens, you will we, we will be able to identify which user from which shop is making that request. And um, with that combination, we know um, which user from which shop is using the app, and therefore we, we can make sure that uh, we're not exposing information that we shouldn't be to other users. Uh, and we also have a few more um, security measures in place here. For example, um, this token, it actually expires um, fairly quickly. It's it needs to be rotated every 60 seconds. So you can see here that the expiration field is actually, um, it, it's actually a few seconds in the future from the point um, when the token was created. And that expiration is, uh, sorry, um, th when that token expires, when you call, for example, authenticated fetch, um, AppBridge will handle renewing that for you. So you don't have to worry about this expiration being short because AppBridge will handle that logic for you. And we have some other fields there, for example, NBF, which indicates that this token is not active. Uh, it's not before that time. So with those two values, we have a very short uh, period during which a request using that token is valid. So that we, we add another like layer of security to your request to make sure that uh, you're not uh, you're not there. There isn't anyone, for example, impersonating you using an old token, for example. Yeah. So if I look at the difference between NBF and expiry, um, it's one minute. This one was exactly. uh, two ten fourteen, and this is two eleven fourteen. Now, how about these other two um, JTI SID? Um, 
Those are fields that are mostly used in, internally. Um, as far as the app is concerned, those fields, they only identify this specific token. So for example, um, whenever we regenerate that token, the, the SID is going to change. Um, but since AppBridge will handle all of that logic for us, uh, we can uh, we, we don't really need to worry about those fields. Cool. So that uh, does it for inspecting the, the JWT token. Let's now move on to the front end, uh, the changes you'll need to make to the uh, front end of your app. So let's first discuss the, the life cycle. Um, Paul, you want to give us a high level? Right. Um... So the way um, a session token works is, um, if you can go back just a little bit, yes. Yep. There we go, yes, that's the one. So um, the way the, the session token works is that it always needs to be created by AppBridge, and, and therefore you always need to have AppBridge loaded on your uh, on your page and your client side in order to be able to use it to get tokens for uh, to request actual data from Shopify. So the the way your your app flow needs to be in order to do that, you need to load your client. Um, you need to load a page, for example, what we're calling a skeleton page, which shouldn't include like any sensitive information from the shop that's making a request. So you will load that skeleton, and that skeleton is basically um, a splash page or, or something indicating that it's loading and that, that it's going to fetch data from Shopify, for example. And in that skeleton, you will create your app bridge client, as it says there. And using that app bridge client, um, you're going to be able to uh, via get, get session token, you're going to be able to generate a, a valid JWT that Shopify will authenticate. And when you make requests from your app front end uh, to your app's back end, um, using authenticated fetch, um, Shopify will make sure that your JWT is always set uh, in the proper way so that your server can authenticate your requests. So that is basically the, the workflow um, of any session token request. Cool. So um, looking at the code again, what exactly will I need um, in order to start using this? So the essential components um, on the front side that you're going to need are basically um, AppBridge, AppBridge React, if you're bu building um, a React app, and AppBridge utils. Um, those are the essential components that you're going to need. Um, you can see that uh, we're pulling from AppBridge utils. We're pulling authenticated fetch and get session token. And uh, but we, we also provide some some very useful resources in the other packages. For example, um, the provider components that we provide in the AppBridge React package. It uh, it automatically encapsulates your app. In, into one uh, into a component that has access to um, all of the AppBridge feature, features. Cool. So let's look at this um, authenticated fetch. So this is actually called further down. Um, it's wrapped in a user logged in function, which we will discuss in a moment. Um, but here's where we call it. Um, it's for the Apollo client, you can specify the fetch function that you want to use. And so ultimately, we're using authenticated fetch. Uh, but recently, we just added this new function to wrap it in a user logged in fetch. So um, Paul, I know you just added this like last week, right? You want to go into it a bit? Um, yes. Um, so that function, um, it, 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 the way it works, what the actions it performs are exactly the same as authenticated fetch. Um, the only added functionality it has is just to make sure that we're processing a, a, a sort of a special header that the Shopify app backend will send um, on, on when your session expires. Um, so the, just to be very clear here, um, that's when your actual session expires, not when your session token expires, which is that one minute period. Um, you're, if you're using online sessions, 
um, your session expires every day. And so if that happens while your app is still active and you make a request to the backend, um, the, the Shopify app will return this um, X Shopify API request failure um, header, which indicates to your app's front end that you need to go through OAuth again to, to get a new um, access token to continue making requests. Okay. Um, and so, Digging into authenticated fetch itself, um, that calls get session token, which we just showed you earlier. Um, so that's why you don't need to call it because it's already done by authenticated fetch. Now, what happens if this fails, Paulo? Like, what can I expect? Um, so if if your if, if if you make a request using authenticated fetch, which has um, which essentially indicates a token that isn't active as far as the backend is concerned, um, one of two things will happen. One of them is the one, the, the, the situation I mentioned before, where we send back the header indicating that you should go through OAuth. Um, and the other one is that the app will actually just redirect you um, directly to, um, to perform a new OAuth uh, process. Because whenever you, get, you need to regenerate your, your access token, you need uh, to go through the OAuth process just to make sure that um, Shopify, because this, this um, access token comes straight from Shopify, it's not um, generated by the app. So whenever you go through OAuth, you're indicating to Shopify that you want uh, to have an access token used to make requests to actually fetch or change data in a shop. Well, cool. so. That's, that's pretty much um, all the steps required to make the call from your front end. And you see like when you use Shopify create um, in the CLI, it's already there for you. Yes, exactly. When you, whenever you call authenticated fetch from your client side, um, it, will, it will use the, um, well, if we want to get like very specific here, it will use the authorization header, like the HTTP authorization header. Um, it's going to set a bearer token with the valid JWT that it just generated. Um, and if you're using the Shopify node library in your backend, um, it already, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on that, but um, the backend app already knows like where to look for that token and how to parse it and how to extract the information that it needs from it so that your app doesn't um, need to concern itself with actually uh, going through all of that process, even though it is uh, possible. Cool. Um, we have a little bit of time. I see a question in the chat. Um, why not just use the offline token in this case? So um, the offline tokens and the online tokens, they, they sort of serve different purposes um, within Shopify. So um, the, the idea here is, is what um, each of them enables you to do. It, it, in, for the most part, they have the same capability. So for example, you, you are able to use an offline token in roughly the same way you'd use a, an online token. Uh, but there are a few key differences uh, being that um, offline tokens, they don't expire. Um, so, for example, once a user has gone through OAuth and they have, uh, they've generated a token, um, you can use that offline token until, well, basically until you go through OAuth again for a new offline token, uh, which would refresh it. Um, if you're using online tokens, that, that indicates that there is currently a user, like an actual user in front of a computer, performing actions that trigger um, data exchange with Shopify. So the, the online token, it, it, in, it enables fewer things because of that, um, because we, we, there are certain things that we don't want to encourage um, the, the client or the end user to do um, using offline tokens, uh, because that could open up um, some um, avenues for malicious usage and things like that. So it, it's it's generally recommended that you always use online tokens um, whenever you have actions in your app that are actually 
uh, being performed by a user and that you use offline tokens for actions that are done in your backend. For example, if you have, let's say, um, a cron task that runs every few minutes and you need to perform certain actions on a shop, um, you don't have to get an online token for that. You can just use an offline one. Um, whereas if you try to use an online token for that, it would expire very quickly. And so it wouldn't really uh, be very useful in that situation. Cool. And uh, we still have five minutes in this segment. So there's one more question that came in on the chat. Uh, are JWT tokens going to be required for all embedded apps? If so, are they also going to be required to be used for non-embedded apps? So, um, yes, uh, the answer to the short answer to that question is yes. Um, because of all the issues we, we sort of went into um, when, when we started uh, the stream, um, with browsers making it more difficult to use um, third-party cookies, um, we don't really have an option of using cookies anymore for embedded apps because in the very near future, um, we believe that browsers are going to make that uh, scenario essentially like not feasible anymore. Um, and so we, we, we are going forward with using JWT on all embedded apps um, because that's a, a more future-proof way of doing it. Um, Although um, we, we, are, we can't really completely rule out um, cookies yet, um, because if you're using an embedded app, you, you're going to have access to AppBridge. But AppBridge only works when your app is actually embedded in the Shopify admin. So that creates a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Um, because if, you're, if your app is non-embedded, um, you won't be able to use JWT because you can't load AppBridge on a non-embedded app because it depends on, on being um, loaded within the admin. So the idea is that you should always use JWT for embedded apps and you will still use cookies, uh, which is essentially what we did before. Like the, the previous way of doing things uh, continues to be the same. Um, for non-embedded apps, so we still um, rely on cookies to to track to authenticate the requests between the client and the server for your app. Right. So, also one thing to note is um, I don't know if everyone saw the notification in their partner dash the other week. So, going forwards, um, all new embedded apps are required to use session tokens, and then by by next year. Um, all embedded apps will be required to adopt them as well. Okay, so that brings us um, to the next section. Uh, we're going to be looking at the backend updates that you'll need to make to your app. So I'm just going to pop in the server here. And um, so what, what packages will I need, Paulo, for the backend? So um, the only essential package that you need is actually the Shopify API one. Um, if you're building a Node app, um, what, what that package does, it provides all of the functionality that your app needs to, to make requests. Um, for example, um, the core features that it provides um, would be OAuth. It provides you with the ability to make requests using both GraphQL and REST um, to the admin API. And that library also allows you to um, register and process webhooks uh, using your app. Uh, but as a means of sort of uh, facilitating uh, the development of apps using a, a specific um, backend stack. So let me just backtrack just a second here. So um, the Shopify API library it was developed um, we, we developed that with the philosophy of not, uh, not telling developers how to write their apps or which, um, which frameworks they should use, which um, storage strategy they should use, for example, if they want to use um, a database like Firebase or, or MySQL or something uh, completely different. Um, so the library won't really force you to go either one way or the other. Uh, but as a means of, of making life easier for, for partners who um, are OK with using this um, COA and Next um, stack that we provide, um, we also provide that COA Shopify auth pack. 
package, which it, it, it provides the same uh, level of functionality that the Shopify API package does, uh, but it adds some utilities on top of that, and it makes it easier for you to use that package uh, specifically with code. Cool. So just a recap, this is all you need down here, Shopify API. But to help you out, we've also provided um, this package uh, in Koa in case you're using Koa. Um, let's go into this as we have some time. Let's go into the details of the Koa package. So you can see in the code, like further down um, on my GraphQL route. So this is where we're taking in that request from the front end, GraphQL, we're calling verify request. And that's provided by the, the code package up above. Let's look at what that does. I think you may need to make uh, the text yeah. a little oh, yeah. bit. So here it's actually called verify token, but it's the yes. same. Yeah, so um, verify request is a middleware that the COA um, package provides, which um, it, it calls through to verify token. So um, and we, we can basically assume that they are um, the same call. Um, so what verify token does is it loads, uh, it processes actually a request made um, by your app's client side using authenticated fetch. Um, as I mentioned before, like that the library knows where to look for and how to extract your JWT data um, from a request. So that's what Verify Token does. So if we dig down into the code for that just a little bit, um, we can see that the first thing it does is basically to load the current session um, from the request and response that uh, that's being used right now. So what that function will do is it will um, parse the headers from the request, extract the authorization header that I mentioned before. Oh yeah, so we, we can show that code, that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's even easier. So load current session, it will uh, basically find out the current session that it should be using and uh, call your session storage load session uh, on that ID. So if we're going to get a current session ID, we can see here um, that this function, it holds all of the logic that it needs um, to, to be able to parse any requests made using JWT to make sure that you are, um, that the request is actually a valid one. So for example, uh, we can see here that we're going to look for the authorization header in, your, in our request, and then we're going to extract the bearer token from it, which is uh, where the JWT token will be. And we're going to decode that token, um, extract the payload from it, extract all of the information that we need, for example, the shop and the, the sub that I mentioned before. And with that information in hand, we're able to load the session that's currently being used. So that's a very long-winded way of saying that um, this um, verify token method uh, middleware, it will read your request, extract the session information it needs, and it will give you back uh, a session for, for that specific request. Cool. OK, so that goes to show that um, this whole package makes it easy for you, but you can implement this all on your own as well. Right, yes, that's, a, that's actually a great point. Um, as I mentioned, um, the underlying Shopify API package um, it, it mostly provides a lot of utility functions. This is the actual library that, that we're looking at here. So it provides a lot of um, uh, functions that if, if you want to implement your app not using Koa, for example, um, you can use this library and you could, um, if you want to take us back to Verify Token, I can show like how it's, it's essentially just a very thin layer um, on top of what the library actually does. So if we see here, verify token, um, all it will do is load the current session, um, check a few things in that session. Um, if, it, if it has an access token, if it hasn't expired, um, if the scopes for the app haven't changed since this session was last used, and if all of those things are, are okay, 
um, we clear the request to go forward because we know that we have a valid session that has a valid access token, et cetera. Uh, otherwise, we will um, redirect the user back to all auth to make sure that they get a, a new access token, which is actually valid. Cool. Um, so actually, this return header part down here is a good segue into our next section. So in the verify request, you can see that we pass through this object with return header equals to true. Do you want to go over that a bit? Right. So um, before, when we were looking at the um, the underlying app file, um, and I, we mentioned the user locked in fetch function. Um, so this header that we're seeing here is actually what uh, return header uh, toggles on or off. So if we go back to uh, to our call here, if we set return header to true, what this will do is it will indicate to the middleware um, that whether we want to redirect the user to OAuth directly, or if we just want to return um, like a marker in our response indicating that it should go to OAuth. So the idea here is that um, your, if your app is making, for example, an AJAX request or, um, or an Apollo client request or any form of request that isn't necessarily the user going into the browser, uh, uh, the browser URL and changing it, um, you will probably want to use return headers set to true. And if you're using this user logged in fetch function that we created, um, that will handle uh, the redirection for you without you having to actually worry about it. Uh, but in there are other requests, for example, if we go down just a little bit to line 101 here, uh, we can see that we're using just like a plain verify request here. Mm -hmm. And so any requests that hits that, for, which is basically just a catch also, um, any request that isn't a specific route in your app, it will just assume that um, it is just a straight request of the, just the URL being changed. And so it will itself trigger um, the redirection for you. Cool. Um, yeah, you can see that after it's, it passes through the handle request, which is part of the, the Next.js um, package, right? And so that routes it through like the pages directory and, and the specific page that it needs. Um, but exactly. for for the GraphQL, what we have after it's verified the, the token is we have um, the GraphQL proxy itself, which makes the call to Shopify. And that's where we need the access token. So that's the difference here. Um, you got the session token up above. And then this is where we need the access token on GraphQL proxy. Um, maybe you want to touch briefly on Graph, GraphQL proxy? Right, so um, I think you put it um, very well there. Um, we, we can see the, the sort of interaction between the session token and the access token very clearly here um, in that um, the, the, the session token, it's only used um, between your app's clients and the, your front end and back end, which is what verify request will do for you. And if we jump into GraphQL proxy, we'll see that it's actually um, just another utility layer added on top of, of other features of the library that you can use directly. For example, you don't necessarily need to use a proxy. Um, it, it's just there to make your life easier if you want to have a proxy in your app. Oh, um, yeah, oh, I guess we don't need to go into the details. Yeah, that's, <laughs> this is not, that's um, a little bit more detail than we need to go into. Uh, but what the GraphQL proxy will do um, it will, given um, a, a request and a response, as we can see here, um, the arguments that we're using in that call, it's, it will basically call load current session as well. It will fetch um, that session. And with that session in hand, you can create a, a GraphQL client. So um, if, you, if you use like the, um, you can create a new instance of Shopify.clients.graphql. For example, there are other clients available. And if you create that instance of your GraphQL client, you can use that um, to make requests however you want in your app. So um, the proxy 
it, it's, it's just a means of um, converting those few calls, that little bit of logic that you need to load a current session, create your client, and then fire um, a request. Um, the proxy is just there to make that whole process easier by just doing all of that logic for you. Cool. Um, I'm going to throw something at you, Paulo, that we didn't really talk about before, but I just noticed now um, is the webhooks part. Um, right. We have to do something special, right, when they uninstall because uh, this, the token will still be around? Yes. So um, I think we, we might want to go back to the start here. So if you look at one route above that, actually, uh, the slash route, um, we are checking the active Shopify shops there, that uh, object. So the logic behind this is um, whenever you go um, into a new page in your app, for example, uh, when you're loading like an actual page from scratch, uh, which is the case, for example, when you're loading the, the slash endpoint, um, your app won't have that bridge then. So you will notice that this endpoint doesn't use verify request. So what we do here is this is an unauthenticated endpoint that you can use to load the page skeleton, as we were mentioning. So this is following that, uh, that same workflow that I described earlier. So this is how we load the page skeleton. Um, and so the, the, the important thing here is this object, it lets us um, determine whether uh, this shop is a new shop that hasn't been installed before, or if this is a shop that's been there before. So if the shop is new, we immediately send the user um, to the auth um, route. And if the app, if the shop has been in the app before, if someone has used that app in that shop before, um, we're, we send them straight to handle request there, which will um, load the page skeleton and, and uh, continue with the flow from there. So uh, the way the webhook plays into this is when your app is uninstalled, um, if you if you didn't unset um, that Shopify active shops object for that shop, uh, the next time you try to go in, it won't go to OAuth because it will assume that this um, app has been installed to that shop. So if you scroll up um, a little bit further, uh, we're almost there. There we go. So this is run after OAuth completes. And we can see here that we're calling Shopify webhooks uh, register. And we are registering the app uninstalled um, topic. So what this tells us is, Whenever um, a, this, this app is uninstalled by the merchant, Shopify will fire that webhook and it will, um, it will land in, in our app. And then we are in, in at the um, slash webhooks path, as we can see there. And we are going to handle that. If you see the webhook handler there, uh, what we do to handle that is to actually unset the shop from that object. So it's as if the shop had never been here before. So um, that's that's why we, we're recommending that people use the app uninstall webhook, um, just to make sure that your app knows which shops need to go to OAuth and which ones don't. Perfect. Um, so that just about wraps up the backend part. Um, and now we're gonna transition over to the questions period. Um, are there any questions in the chat? Let's see. Um, I don't think we have any questions. I think there was a conversation going on here. If you have a question, uh, please feel free to type it in the chat. Cool. Um, I guess we've pretty much explained things. Pretty well. Uh, where else can we go? Did we skip over anything? I think we got through everything we wanted to get through. Um, let's see. Since we have some time, I wonder if uh, there's any. Oh, I think we just got a question on Twitch. Okay. After auth, we'll get called after every OAuth session. I usually add a script tag call in after auth. What would be the best way to add script tag in this new config? Right, so um, 
I see here that um, we, we, we actually go through something slightly similar uh, for webhooks. They, they essentially work um, in a very um, similar way. Um, so what we do when you call um, Shopify webhooks register, as we can see there, um, oh, sorry, we don't have that uh, visible right now, sorry. Uh, but it, when we register a webhook, what the library will do is it will, um, it will look for that webhook and see if it's already installed. So um, I, I won't be able to demonstrate it here, uh, but if you use um, the GraphQL API, you're able to um, fetch from the server like which script tags have been added to that shop. And so you can, you can tell whether you need to add a new script tag or not. So um, unfortunately, we can't um, have this after auth callback work in a way that um, we sometimes call it and sometimes don't. We, we always need to call it. Um, but what we can do in this case is before we try to register a new script tag or webhook, um, we can just check if it isn't already there. Um, that's, that, that can be done using the GraphQL client that I was actually mentioning before. Cool. Let's see if there's any more questions. Safari stuck in redirect loop does not work. Well, that's a, it's a bit um, not sure difficult to say, but when, when that happens, that's, um, that's usually um, a scenario where uh, the session wasn't created after all of um, it usually indicates that we're having trouble relaying some information um, from the client to the server. For example, um, for, for the process of OAuth specifically, yes, exactly. So um, that's that's what I was actually um, getting into that. So um, for, for OAuth specifically, we, we still use cookies because as I mentioned before, um, we can only use JWT um, when we're actually embedded within the admin. And when we're doing OAuth, we are uh, by definition outside of the admin. So OAuth always needs to happen at the top level of the browser. You can never perform OAuth when your app is loaded in an iframe. So you always need to be um, outside of the admin um, when that happens. And for Safari, um, there are, there you need to run through the, um, oh, I forget the name of the function right now. I believe it's called request storage access. So um, when you, uh, when you call that function, um, you're basically asking for permission from your user. That, unfortunately, is something that we can't work around because it's a Safari requirement. Like, you cannot store cookies in Safari until the user has given you permission to do that. So um, you need to call this request um, storage access function in order to be able to, to actually use cookies and uh, enable the OAuth process as a whole to work. Cool. So any more questions? Crypto Future says thanks. OK. Um, well, if there are no more questions, I guess we could wrap it up. Um, I do have, I'm going to post something here. In case there are more questions, We've set up a Slido, so you can just post it here. The event code is 787212, um, and, and we'll get to you. Um, that's just because we're going to be posting this video on YouTube as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can post your question here. Uh, we'll monitor it for about two or three weeks. Um, after that, we'll shut it down. So. Thank you for joining our, our live session token tutorial. And um, Paulo, thank you for your, your valuable answers and your insights. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have, again, if you have questions, post it on the slide. And thanks for joining everyone. Bye. Thanks everyone for being here.